OAuth, it's an authentication project which gets more and more extended. That means a lot of developers are sitting there and implementing more and more features and it was necessary because Identity Manager supports OAuth as well to increase the configuration of OAuth. In the past, we had a couple of configuration parameters just storing all of these configuration. In the meantime, we know this is a little bit to less, especially because there are more and more parameters and additionally you can mo have more than one OAuth connection. What we did is we created now a data set, that means a table set in the Identity Manager database, which is there to store OAuth configuration things. As you can see on the right hand side of the slide, QBM Identity Provider, QBM Identity Client and, uh, and so on are the tables where you now will find all of this OAuth configuration. Additionally to that exists an OAuth uh, connection wizard and this connection wizard will allow you to get all of the data collected and this wizard will then store all of this data in the tables I mentioned before. A new feature in OAuth is to use the JSON web key. Um, this was improved in the identity manager as well. With the new 8.1 version you have now the intense support for JSON web keys in the authentication and this will now support the currently available key types. What gets developed tomorrow nobody knows but at the end we will then as well add them to the list with the next version if there are some we have to support. A very short feature, it's a new feature which is now implemented as well. In the past we was login log in attempts to the database, but we was not logging log off attempts to the database. That means once a user was logged off, for example from the manager, this was not logged and was not part of the historization of course. This is now possible. We are now able to do so. There is a new configuration parameter and that is something you can now check in and if this one is checked then the system will start to log as well log offs and then they will be part of the database journal and can be used for audit purpose for example. Part of that story as well is that having now log in and log off attempts it might be a good idea to build an interface where just this information that means log in log off it's somehow displayed. It is a little bit like in Microsoft Windows where we can look into the event viewer and will then see the audit track and the audit track mostly shows log in log off. It's the same in Linux where we have a specific log that only it's showing something for security and of course for the identity manager exists now something like that as well. This is the second part on the left hand side of the slide where we talk about a specific view which is named QBM v dialog journal log audit and this specific view will look on the database journal and will filter out of this bunch of information just the login and log off attempts. Very short the log on log off feature you can see again in design of the configuration parameter section in the configuration parameter section underneath of common journal here we are our two parameters login audit and log off audit. Both of them have to be activated. They are deactivated out of the box. You have to commit to the database. Once this is done, you can then just get these messages. Therefore, for example, I like to start job queue info. And to start job queue info, I log in just with my standard name. I misspell the password. I get an error message. I correct the password. There is my job queue info and I at least close the connection. All of that should now be stored in the database because my configuration parameters are activated. To see so I just look into my SQL. By the way a lot of people often ask me why I don't do that in object browser. There is just one reason in videos uh, I want to have these characters very big on the screen so that everybody easily can see them. And in object browser I'm not able just to increase the size of the characters and that is the reason why I'm using the SQL Studio. So I'm just searching for something and don't find something that is maybe because I misspell here the where clause. So let's just drop the where clause for a second. Here we are jobqinfo.net. It's what I'm searching for. And if I just spell it correctly, then we get exactly what we did. It is for the tool jobqinfo.net. We see a system user Hervik that was trying to log in and failed and then we see a login system user Hervik 
was just getting in, which is the login here, and then the log off action directly after. And this is what I want to show. Now let's talk role-based permission groups, which are not really role-based uh, from a role perspective. We are talking about permission groups. You know, permission groups are these elements uh, you can configure in Designer, which holds all of these identity manager permissions. And these permission groups are typically used to handle table rights and column rights and features and whatever else other stuff. New in 8.1 is that these permission groups can be assigned to programs. And the idea behind is the following. If you are a standard user, for example, or a standard data admin, and you want to use the operations portal, then to just use the operations portal, you need more permissions than you typically use as a data admin. And um, you can now add these permissions just to the standard permission groups and ensure that this person comes with all the permissions needed to just handle operations web. But remember, you only need a bunch of security only for the operations web. And for all other tools, that's not allowed or that important. And you don't want to have too many permissions. So the idea was to say, hey, let's make it possible that you can assign permission groups to applications. And then if a user just came with his standard set of permissions and he signs into a specific application just for this application, he will have more permissions. And this is by getting additionally to the standard user permissions, the permissions of that specific permission group, which is assigned to the application. Therefore, as you can directly see on the slide, are now, for example, new permission groups created. A good example, therefore, it's the operations map, as mentioned. There is a QER4 and then operation support group. And this one is assigned to the operations web directly. As you can see, the underscore four underscore says it is a permission group, which is typically defined for application roles. And this is the limit what you have to know. And again, we are in designer and we are looking at the base data section. There is the programs filter underneath of security settings. And here we find all the programs just stored in one identity manager. And what I like to do is, I want to assign a permission group to one of these programs. Therefore, I typically will expect that there should be a tab that allows me that. Unfortunately, I cannot see the tab two choices to solve this typical issue. The first option is just to click here on view and then to say layout and then default layout. And as you easily can see, here we are. Uh, this, by the way, happens typically if you just upgrade an older version of the designer. And with the help of default layout, you get then all tabs shown. And if I click now on permission group, you can see that especially for my entry operation support web portal, here a specific permission group is assigned. And we remember this is to give people signing into the operations portal additionally permissions just handled by that specific selected group. Authentication modules, we all know of them. And this is the way how people get their permissions in one identity manager. And you can select them from the login mask. This is something from my perspective, everybody knows in the meantime. And the one or the other might have seen, maybe since version seven of the identity manager, that there is an M2N relationship in the identity manager. You can see that I'm a designer and this M2N relationship looks like you can just assign these authentication modules to applications. If you tried maybe in the past just to remove or to add such uh, an authenticator just to a specific program, you will have seen the error message, which was just telling you, you have no permissions to change this assignment. From a user perspective, this is not pretty cool, especially because a lot of customers, especially big customers using a set of authenticators, that means a handful, and they don't want that for every front end, users will have the ability just to select one of these. And so it makes sense from their perspective just to configure these authenticators for programs. Unfortunately, only one identity R&D is able to do so. And this is the reason for this enhancement we are talking about. In version 8.1, it is first time possible just to deactivate such assignments for specific programs. It is not possible, not in the past and not today, 
just to assign or to remove such an assignment for an authenticator from an application. The reason is these are out of the box objects and as we all know out of the box objects are typically write protected. Same for that end to end relationship but not write protected are flags. And so the M2N relationship table got a flag, you can see it, dialog product has authenticator is the table, the flag it's named is inactive. And now these assignments could be set to inactive, which at the end results in you will not see the authenticator in the dropdown box. To make that visible, the easiest way is to look at, for example, this login screen of the manager. There is the authentication method dropdown box many authentication modules in there. I want to show you the whole feature used and based on employee dynamic. I want just to uh, configure employee dynamic that it disappears. Here it is already visible. So to make it disappearing, I just step into the designer. Here we are. It's the base data section. It's uh, base data programs. And in programs, I can see my programs. One of them is the manager. Let me first show you exactly the authentication module assignment. Here it is. And as you can see, there is as well the dynamic authenticator, employees dynamic. I can just try to deselect it. Here we are. I can then try to commit this to the database. And as you easily can see, here is then wonderful error message that let me know that this is not possible. And now just let's do the disassignment a little bit different than typical. Therefore, I just take this employee dynamic entry here. Then I step to the usage overview and you can see here the effective authenticators and the disabled authenticators. Effective should be employee dynamic. Here we are, this is the one. And I want just to deselect it. Therefore I click that specific entry here and say edit. And what I can see there is a new flag is inactive. And in difference to the others, which are gray and not changeable, this one is changeable. So now it's set to true. I can just save the whole thing. Here we are. Now I have just to close my manager so that the information gets notified again. And I will then just start the manager. That is deselect. And as you can see, no dynamic employee authenticator anymore. This is exactly what I want to show.